He is risen. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to worship at Tewksbury Congregational Church on this glorious Easter morning. No matter where you are worshiping from or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We are so happy to have people in the sanctuary and we look forward to that happening more and more often. If those of you out in the cloud would start putting your prayer requests on Facebook, we'll be able to share those later on in the service. Just a few announcements. The Lenten Book Study finishes this week on Thursday evening and Saturday morning. Thank you to all who have attended and thank you to Sue Bradley for leading it. Our beautiful flowers day can be picked up after this service or down in the fellowship hall between one and two this afternoon. It is Love Offering Sunday. This money is used to sh um, share with the community our market basket gift cards that the deacons give out. You can do this by donating online or you can find one of these envelopes in the lower narthex. Today is communion and these cups are a little challenging. Um, so there's a top cellophane piece that has to come off first in order to be able to release the little wafer and then there's another layer. So it's a little challenging, but it's, it's what we need to do right now. We are also in uh, nominating season. As you reflect on what God has done for you, please consider what you can do for God through serving in our church. And please check out The Flash this week. There is an article about our music ministry and how wonderful it has been. And there's a library of all the videos of all the songs that Lucinda and the, Carol, the uh, Carillon Bell Ringers have done, and that is also there. There are no other announcements. Let us be in the spirit of worship. Good morning once more and happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It's good to see all these smiling faces here this morning. It's good to see you out there in the clouds. You can laugh at this. <laughs> but anyway, happy Easter. I, I want to give you some words of assurance this morning on, on Resurrection Sunday. Darkness is gone. Light floods into our soul. Christ is risen. His mercy, His love and mercy are poured out for you. Rejoice. You have been saved Christ 
Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's so wonderful to see everyone this Easter morning and thank the Lord for this beautiful sunshine and the flowers. For our first hymn this morning, we have number 288, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall never be thirsty. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took his authority as the Christ and offered the bread and thanksgiving and said, In the same way and by the same authority, Jesus offered the cup of thanksgiving and said, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Open our eyes to the mystery of Christ's presence in these ordinary things and in these ordinary lives. May they be for us the very essence of the living Christ in our midst through the broken bread, through the cup of life. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready. And now you're welcome to open up your cup and take your wafer and then open the other part and share in the cup of life. Now let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, you have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Thank you for feeding our hunger and relieving our thirst. Now send us into the world to do the work you have given us to do, to find the lost and lonely, to heal broken souls, to free prisoners, and make the powerful care, grant us strength to persevere in resisting evil, and to proclaim in all we do, and do your good news. In Christ Jesus our Savior, amen. scripture reading today is from Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapters 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, and of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines stained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Good morning again. The second scripture reading today is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. But first, let us pray. O God of Easter joy, we come this morning with glad shouts of acclamation. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May this time of worship and hearing the good news help us to truly and fully experience this risen Christ. May we be transformed, transformed into your people, winging through the earth with messages of beauty, hope, and life. Amen. From Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath, with the, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Susanna, for the reading of God's holy word. And good morning to you once more. And happy Resurrection Sunday. And I'm going to say it again. He is, risen. he is risen. Were you all excited when you got up this morning at 4 a.m. like I did? Delgado sisters, were you excited when you got up at 4 a.m. this morning? Okay, stop right there. <laughs> stop right there. Anyway, I, I miss asking our children questions every Sunday morning. The answer is you just never know what's going to happen. But anyway, good morning once more and welcome to Resurrection Sunday. We have come here to celebrate an empty tomb. Say, say empty. Um, you know, uh, it was emptied and if it had a four rent cell out front, it was here in Massachusetts, it would say four rent, $5,000 a month. Oh, come on. You got, you got. But anyway, uh, wow, we, uh, we just finished Lent, uh, and uh, our Lenten devotional, our, our, uh, our Lenten season is very important to us, and I hope you all grew closer to Christ, and I hope you learned more about yourselves uh, as a follower of Christ. Uh, I, I really hope you had a good and holy Lent, but guess what? Lent's over. We are here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, when the women went to the tomb that morning, they had no idea it was empty. They went in the morning and it was still dark. They had followed all their customs. The Passover was over. The Sabbath was over. They slept that night, probably with tears because of what had happened to Jesus. And they went to that tomb expecting death. There's this great story that I share with you this morning of Reverend Tim Thompson. Reverend Thompson retired from ministry a few years ago, but he left us with a lot of great stories. And he told the story of when he officiated his first graveside service. Now, us pastors, we, we have these little things called, they're called book, books of worship, book of worship. And they're usually black on the outside, made out of leather, and you can put them in your pocket. Uh, I can't do our UCC one, it, it's very thick. It's about this thick. Mike, you remember me showing it to you? It's hard to put in your pocket. Mo most other denominations, it's very thin. So anyway, Reverend Thompson had it in his pocket. So it, it came time to officiate the service, and he walked to the head of the casket, which is, which is uh, customary. And everybody was there. It was very, it was very sad, and it was packed uh, around the graveside. And he got his book of worship out, and he dropped it. And he went down into the grave right next to the casket. Had all his notes and all the words he was going to say. And guess what happened? Everybody broke into laughter. 
<laughs> who drops their, bush of, uh, their book of worship down into the, to the grave? But Reverend Thompson was very embarrassed that he was a green pastor. Uh, he was still learning. Uh, it wasn't going the way he thought it would, but, but maybe it was going the way that God wanted it to go. Everybody broke into laughter that day. And you know, it's hard to laugh when you're at a graveside. You've, you've lost a loved one, a dear friend. But everybody laughed, and they went into the service without the book of worship, and they celebrated and they prayed. They, they celebrated the resurrection of that person who was in the presence of God that day. Say amen. I've always seen laughter as a sign of the resurrection. I, I really, really have. You got tears, but you're still laughing because you're, you're so grateful for that person that, that had died in the memories. But, but there's, there's still so much hope because of what Christ has done for us. And that, that's the, the power of the resurrection. And I hope you've had many resurrections in your life as God has rolled away the stone from your tomb. And maybe God needs to do it several times. I don't know about you. I need a little bit of reminding every once in a while because I'm a human being. And they say to err is to human. Uh, that's me. So God is always rolling away these stones. Say amen. Say, say hallelujah. Say resurrection. So, so God had a different plan. And I, I like God's plans better in mind, do you? You know, sometimes my plans work out, but a lot of times they don't. But, but I know if God's in that plan, it's going to work out. So the women went with their customary spices that morning. They were going to go to the tomb, and they were going to use those spices to cover up the stench of death. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? You know, we have people to do that for us these days at our, at our great funeral homes here in Tewksbury. They didn't have that, so they were doing what was the customs of their day. They were worried about who was going to roll this stone back, and I don't know about you, but I would be worried too. You know, you need somebody strong to roll that back. And they were worried about it, and when they got there, guess what? The stone had already been rolled back, and they looked in the tomb, and guess who wasn't there? Jesus wasn't there. Apparently, Jesus was already on the movie. He'd gone back to Galilee where the ministry, his ministry had started. That, that's great, isn't it? And that's what the, the man dressed in white told the ladies that day, told the women. And uh, he said, what you're looking for, this death you're looking for, it's not here. You're going to find this empty tomb. You see it's empty. And you know what? You need to go and tell the disciples and Peter... Peter was a disciple, but I think Peter maybe needed to hear it a little bit more. And you know, they went thinking they were going to find death, but what did they find? Life. You know, on the cross, Jesus emptied his life for us. And then God emptied that tomb that morning. And we live in that power to resurrection. I know you want to say amen. Come on, get as excited as a pastor that wakes up at 4 a.m. on Sunday morning and can't sleep, that's going to crash if it wasn't for the coffee and the donuts and the, and the orange cinnamon roast by, by Miss Linda. I may not be awake right now. Oh, yeah, that, that fuels the, the Holy Spirit power. Excuse me, no, 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 the Holy Ghost power. We're going to go old school here. Uh, Happy Easter. Smile, people. You, you're, you are the resurrected people. God has given you life. And whatever comes our way, God is rolling away stones and making a way for us. He empties our tombs and He gives us new life. I know you want to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the women, they went to the tomb and they found life. And they were charged to go and share the good news. And I've said it twice today and i say it again. If it was the men, we would have messed it up. So God sent the three women out to be the first three evangelists, at least in the story of Mark, in the Gospel of Mark. And, and they were going to run and share this good news, but they were too scared at first. And I would be scared half to death after seeing this miracle. I just want to tell you. I don't imagine how they, how they felt, but uh, could, could you imagine the, the shaking, maybe the tears of joy, the laughter, and thinking about all these things that Jesus had taught them had come true. Because the week before it was brutal and it was hurtful. They stayed with him to the very end. And they thought they were going to go to the tomb that morning to do this one last act of devotion for Jesus. 
But was the spices on the body going to be the last act of devotion? No way. Because they were going to run and share the good news. A great act of devotion for them and for us to share the good news of God, the power to resurrection, for us to have something new in our life happen, to be a new creation, for God to help us overcome and again to empty out all the things that hurt us when we hurt ourselves and others hurt us. God can make a way. God is always on the move. God is always moving forward and forward and forward. And who does God move forward through today? The church. The church of Jesus Christ, this gift, this faith community that God has given us all to share the kingdom principles, to share the good news. So they went in the dark expecting death and they found life. Are you alive in Christ this morning? Are you a resurrected person? I uh, was just enamored this, this past Good Friday. I want to thank Mike for setting up these stations out there. It reminded me of everything that Christ went through for us and for all of creation. But then I got to station 14. Thank you for adding that. After those other stops, I was reminded of what was going to come today. And I rejoice. I rejoice. Victory over death. We should say that every day. Victory over death. Victory over the things that hold us back. Victory. Victory. Victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. Where's Lucinda? We need to sing that one day. You'll find it all right. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. May we thank God for emptying and getting us out of the tomb and giving us new life, being a new creation. All right. In 20 minutes, I'm going to crash and I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> and then I will resurrect probably about 2 o'clock. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So, for our next hymn this morning, we got number 298, The Day of Resurrection. And now is our time of prayer. I'm going to ask Stephanie to read our prayer requests, and also you'll have an opportunity to share as well your prayer requests and your celebrations. Good morning. We got a prayer of thanksgiving for the beautiful weather we're having today. 
And then um, if we could have a, a prayer for the violence that's happened in the nation this week, uh, for the families that are affected by that. Lucinda is asking for prayers for her husband, Dan, prayers of healing. He's been having some complications with his health. I'm asking for prayers for my friend, Eva, who's battling blood cancer and having some struggles. Russ A is his brother, Bill, and sister-in-law, Carol, as they deal with Bill's onset of Alzheimer's. Lynette A, her sister, Lori, and family as she begins her battle with breast cancer. Steve R is asking for continued prayers for Kelly, who's uh, recovering from her cancer surgery. And then if we could also have prayers for Yvonne as she's going through hip replacement surgery this week. Do you have any prayers from the floor? Christopher? Christopher is asking for prayers of those who are um, suffering the effects of the pandemic and that hopefully we can um, have a, a resurrection of sorts one day. <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, prayers for <laughs> Mercy's brother, Ch Uncle Charlie, um, uh, well, the girl's Uncle Charlie, <laughs> they asked for prayers for him. Oh, Sheila. Jill is asking for prayers of thanksgiving for those that have helped keep the church going this year, and she's thanking everybody. Oh, and Mercy has one. Um, Mercy's asking for prayers for Ginny D, who's leaving rehab this week, who uh, had surgery and after a broken leg in a car accident. Um, that's it, I think. All right, let's go to prayer. Right. Let us pray.
Gracious God, we thank you so much for this time of prayer on this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for the gift of resurrection. Thank you for an empty tomb. Thank you for our Savior sitting at your right hand this day. Almighty God, we thank you for all that we pray for this morning, every situation and every person. May they feel your grace and healing power this day. Be with them, their families. Be with their church family that are always supporting them and lifting them up in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear every name and situation. Lord, we pray for so much this morning as we continue to go through a pandemic. We pray for a resurrection, O oh God, as we come out of this, as things return to normal. Lord, we pray for all the, all the hurt that's going on in our world, all, all the violence, and may we as the people of the resurrection share your good news uh, so people know that they're loved and they don't have to do these things. Mighty God, we thank you for guiding our church and may we be your Easter people and go out uh, and, and share the power of the resurrection and, and share the, the good news that Jesus has given to us. Mighty God, we thank you that there are so many ways that we offer our lives to you and we ask that you bless our offering this morning. And help us use it in service to you to again declare, to declare your love and grace. Our prayer we lift to you this morning, O oh God, on this beautiful Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen. And uh, before I start this last hymn, I definitely want to say thank you to the bells and thank you, Lucinda, and that wonderful trumpet player for all the awesome music this morning. And for our next hymn this morning, we got He Lives. <laughs>
to serve a God of life? Are you excited that God has emptied your tombs as well? Are you excited to maybe run from here and go and share that good news of God? All right, let us do that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He is risen. Amen. Oh,